Hebraic Hebron. We're learning the Hebrew Aleph Bet. This is our 12th lesson. These are the letters that we've learned so far. Aleph, Bet, and Vet. Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yud, Lamed, Mem, Mem Sofit, at the end of a word. Nun, Nun Sofit, if it's at the end of a word. Samech, Ayin, Resh, and Shin, and Sin. Don't forget Sin. Today, I have the exciting news that we're going to learn three letters and we'll get credit for one. We'll fill in this blank right here. It's a letter called Chaf, or excuse me, Kaf. It's called Kaf. Looks like that, like a backwards C with a dot in it. In the script, it's a backward C with a dot in it. We have one word that we're going to look at with the cough in it. Key. It means because. Because. A mom can use this as an answer for a child. A child says, why can't I go out and play? Because. Key. Key. Write it. Key. 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 I remember when I was in first grade and I was trying to learn the English alphabet and I was having trouble with all these letters that have a circle and a stick. There was one like this, there was one like this, there was one like this, there was one like this. I couldn't keep them straight. And then we'd say the alphabet and go, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. And that's where I got into trouble. I wasn't sure, is that L, M, N, O two letters or is it three? And of course, if I got off track there, the rest of the alphabet was, was lost on me. We're going to learn another form of the cuff. When it doesn't have the dot, it's a huff. Still looks like a backwards C. And in the block, sometimes both of these, the, the, the kaf and the chaf, might be a little bit more squared off than the script chaf. Chaf has a sound of ch as in bach. I'm so thankful for Johann Sebastian Bach. That's not a common sound around here. We learned that sound when we learned the chet. So we've got the word uh, so, kaha, kaha means so. And if we put them together, we can go kaha kaha. Kaha kaha means so so. Not good, not bad. Somewhere in the middle. Kaha kaha. And then the word for now is achshav. Thank you. 
Achshav ends in a vav, means now. Achshav, wow, what a great word. Let's write it. Achshav. Achshav, now. And one more. Ochev. Ochev, eat. It's masculine. Eat or eat. Ochev, ochev, eat. Don't say ohel. If you look in the book, it's got an H with a dot under it for this sound here. And I was telling a class er earlier that there's a difference between ohel, which means eat, and ohel, which means tent. And an 87-year-old woman who was in the class said, I can remember that ohel means tent because that's what I'd say if I had to crawl into one. We're going to learn another form of the kaf. When it doesn't have the dot, it's a chaf. Still looks like a backwards C. In the block, sometimes both of these, the, the, the kaf and the chaf, might be a little bit more squared off than the script chaf. Chaf has a sound of ch as in Bach. I'm so thankful for Johann Sebastian Bach. That's not a common sound around here. We learned that sound when we learned the chet. So we've got the word uh, so, kacha. Kacha means so. And if we put it together, we can go kacha kacha. Kacha kacha means so so. Not good, not bad. Somewhere in the middle. Kacha kacha. And then the word for now is achshav. Achshav ends in a vav, means now. Achshav, wow, what a great word. Let's write it. Achshav. Achshav. Now. And one more. Ochev. Ochev. Eat. It's masculine. Eat or eat. Ochel, ochel, eat. Don't say ohel. If you look in the book, it's got an H with a dot under it for this sound here. And I was telling a class er earlier that there's a difference between ochel, which means eat, and ohel, which means tent. And an 87-year-old woman who was in the class said, I can remember that ohel means tent, because that's what I'd say if I had to crawl into one. We'll look at one more thing about the chaf, and, or the kaf. If it occurs at the end of a word, 
It's going to have a tail. So if the ruling on the paper is like that, in a script, it's going to go. And in the block, it's going to go below the line, like that. Look, look at a word, which means how. Eh. It's, it's always in a question. You see these dots here? There's a reason for these dots, and the reason has to do with what the block chaf looks like. The block chaf looks a little bit like a dalit. The dalit fits within the line, and it looks like this. So, to keep from having a confusion between this letter and this letter, we put couple of dots there, or it might take a vowel, it might take a, a, it might take a comets, but if you'll see it, if it doesn't have another vowel, it'll take the shava, it'll take these two dots. So we can, uh, now that we know that this What's going to, how a, a chaf is going to end at the end of word. We can say, how are you? To a man. Mashlom ha. Ma You can ask a man, how are you? You can ask a woman, how are you? Ma shlomech. How are you? What else can we say? We can give an answer. Uh, I am fine. We're still using the form of the word shalom. Shlomi, Shlomi, Tov, Shlomi, Tov, my peace is good, Shlomi, Tov. There would be another answer. For how are you? You could say beseder. Beseder means all right. All right, okay. Seder means order. Beseder in order. So somebody might say Mashlom Cha. You could say Shlomi Tov. If you're a woman, they might ask you Mashlomech. You might say Beseder. Uh, we looked earlier at Kacha. If we put Kacha with another Kacha, it means so so. Mashlom Cha, Kacha Kacha. Not good, not bad. Fair to Midland. We should continue to practice reading aloud. What if we look at the bottom of page 39, which is from lesson 11, from the previous lesson. Bottom of page 39. 
Ata Lomed Ivrit Number fifteen Mashiach Ba El Israel The sixteenth Ze Yom Rishon seventeen at Hasavta Shelo Safta means grandmother. Eighteen Ain Li Shiur Beshabat. Shiur means lesson. Nineteen Hu Lo Yadid Tov. Twenty Shabbat Shalom, Adoni. Twenty-one, Do Ohev et Haruach. This would be a good time to pause your device that you're on and practice reading. Practice reading these sentences. There's a song from the early settlers of Israel. It's probably from maybe the 1930s. It's a fun song. It's about coming to the land and planting a crop, crop planting a crop. It's called Arza Alinu. Arza Alinu, and it starts off saying that three times. Arza Alinu, Arza Alinu, Arza Alinu. We have come up to the land. Kvar harashnu vegam zaranu. I say that a couple of times. We have plowed and also planted. Remember, gam means also. Aval odlo katsarnu. I say that four times. But we have not yet harvested. Arza alinu. Our homework for this lesson. Starting on page 41 at the top, fill in the blanks. Note about the middle of the page, they're going to want you to say, Shlomi Tov, my peace is good, I am fine, Shlomi Tov. Near the bottom, we're going from English to Hebrew, and they want you to write the Hebrew word for yes which hasn't been given in the book, Ken, with a kaf. Ken means yes. On the bottom of the page, translate from Hebrew to English, and they sneak in a word here. You're supposed to sound it out. Root. Root means Ruth. Page 42 at the top. Translating from Hebrew to English. Here, a way of saying and is with vav at the beginning of the word, but this time instead of being v, it's u. U devash. Devash means honey and honey. U devash. People have had trouble with that before, so I'm filling you in on that. On the bottom, translate from English to Hebrew. Do Pimsler Hebrew, it'll help you. I like to do Pimsler every day. It's fun, it's educational. It'll help you learn to speak and listen to Hebrew. And practice reading off of the book, printed page each day. In a couple more lessons, we'll be ready to read a page of simple Hebrew. On page 50 of the book, there's an entire page of text and you'll be able to read it in three sessions from now. That's what we're moving toward. We almost know enough letters to have command of simple Hebrew. See you next lesson. Thank you.